So in the lab manual, there's this example of, of this scooter, and we wanted to find the center of gravity, and not the three-dimensional, okay, but along this platform here, a two-dimensional center of gravity. We're kind of going to assume that it's in between these two back wheels, right in the middle there, but where is it along between this wheel and the back axle? Okay, is it sitting right, right about here, straight below, or is it up here, or here, or here? We don't know where the center of gravity is. And so we, we put the wheels on a scale, each of on a scale, and measured the weight at each scale. Okay, and then we worked out the problem by placing a grid, a Cartesian coordinate system, upon our scales. And we wrote down the values and found the coordinates for each of those, those wheels sitting on the scales. So here's the two back wheels and there's the front wheel. And there's coordinates for each one of these. And we calculated the center of gravity using um, the CG calculation, okay, using the X coordinate. And so the X coordinate with the weight and the, um, the X coordinate with the weight and the X coordinate with the weight. Okay, and then we divided that. We summed all those up, those products, and we divided it by the sum of all three weights. Okay, and from that we came up with the XCG. And the YCG, uh, we just took the Y coordinates, weight, uh, Y coordinate, weight, and Y coordinate, weight. All right, and we got the YCG. Now, how could we, if we're careful, could we increase the accuracy of our CG by decreasing the error propagation? Do you remember error propagation? Each of these coordinates has uncertainty with it because you can see this, this weight right here, the wheel was sitting right there where the plus sign is. It's not quite on the grid crossing for this grid and for this grid. It's a little bit off. So there's uncertainty in this measurement here for the coordinates. And certainly the weight itself does not have an exact value. This might be 50 plus or minus 2 pounds. So there's uncertainty in all these measurements that went into this calculation. And the way that we could report the uncertainty in our 2.8 for the XCG would be to add the relative uncertainty in the X coordinate we find that by saying, oh, let's say the relative uncertainty is um, 0.3, okay, along this x-axis. So 0.3 divided by 8 would be relative uncertainty in x-coordinate. And then we take 2 pounds divided by 50 pounds to get relative uncertainty in the weight. And then we find the relative uncertainty for each of these values and add up all those relative uncertainties, and that would give us the relative uncertainty in the XCG. Could we increase the accuracy by decreasing the error propagation? By accuracy, what we mean is the, the true CG in this case. The true CG, was, was it right here in the center of this dot, or was it outside here within my measurement uncertainties? What could we do when we place the grid on this system to try to decrease the error propagation? What if we could get rid of some of these terms? We cannot get rid of any of the terms in the denominator, but we might be able to get rid of some of these terms in the numerator. Let's take a look at how we could have placed our grid. Let me see here about turning some things off. Let's get rid of our coordinates. And let's get rid of our axes and our grid. So there's our, our scooter, okay, and there's the CG. It's a little bit forward of the back axle. And if we're looking at the scooter, it's, it's probably right in there somewhere, okay, a little bit forward of that back axle. Well, let's think about how we might place a grid. What if we put the grid like this? So what we've done is we've rotated the grid. Here was our first method. What if when we applied the grid, we rotated the grid so that the two back wheels were on a similar line? Do you see how this grid line right here goes through both back wheels? 
huh. So we might be increasing our accuracy because we might be able to decrease our error propagation. The way we could decrease the error propagation is get rid of some of those terms in the numerator. Now, let's, here's the original, well, it doesn't matter about the original, but let's look at the new axis. If we position the axis and the origin right there, aha, uh -huh. do you see the advantage? Do you see how we might decrease error propagation by placing our axis there and rotating our axes? Let's look at the, um, the new coordinates. The new coordinates are different. This is the y-axis now, and this is the x-axis. So all these values are different, but notice we have a 0, 0 here and a 9, 0 here. That looks like we might be able to cancel some of our terms in the numerators for the x and the y cg. Now here's our new cg. Well, no, I'm sorry. That's our new cg. Oh, look. The new cg is almost exactly where the old CG was. Let me turn on the old one. It's sitting right back here, just a little bit off. Let me turn off this one. That's the old CG, and that's the new. Oh, they're not identical. I must have made a mistake. No, absolutely not. I had uncertainties. So I guess if you call those mistakes. The uncertainties allowed these two CGs to be slightly different from one another. But they're not wildly different. If one of my CGs was way over here, that'd be way outside the uncertainty calculation okay, for my CG. And so I'm comfortable with the fact that these two CGs are really close to one another, at least within the size of my error propagation. If I look at the calculation for both, um, for both systems, Here's the original X and Y CGs. Here is the rotated coordinate system. You'll notice the zero appears right here. Let me zoom in on this. The zero appears in this term. So this middle term goes away, which means the uncertainty goes away. And in the Y CG, we get rid of two terms. That goes away, and that goes away, and the uncertainties go away as well. Uh-huh. So I think we just learned a way that we can increase the accuracy, the knowledge of where the center of gravity lies, by decreasing our error propagation simply by putting on a rotated coordinate system where two of the weights are along one grid line, and then turning on putting our axis, the origin, at one of the weight values. So, I hope that helps you. Little hints.